Hi there, it's Jeanette from Far Forest Ceramics, my home studio, and this is part two of a two-part compilation um, when I actually met one of my Potter friends from the UK for the first time, only ever met virtually before. It's Julia from Ceramics by Julia, so if you haven't seen part one, I would go and check that out first because it will make an awful lot more sense if you do that, and hopefully you enjoy. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm thinking that I should slip and score those Ooh. like as a combined piece, do you think? Yeah, I want to watch how you're getting it in the bowl. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that may not be happening. Um, uh, you know what? You should put it on plastic and then lift the plastic up and put it into the... That's a great idea. It's probably about half an hour too late. Yeah, that, that would have been really <laughs> useful information yeah. yes, had we had that been. before we started. Yeah, but I um, just thought of it. But what about, I've got to slip and score to glue these pieces, haven't I? I think. Yeah. But maybe I don't need to slip, maybe I, maybe I don't need to score, maybe I can just slip because there's a bit of texture in the pattern underneath. True. And then I could do a reverse onto plastic, a reverse back onto plastic. True. On the board. Yeah. I could do flip flip. I'm hearing you. As Bill from Alive Pottery says, Fifferini. I love Bill. <laughs> Hi Bill if you're watching. Hello Bill. We're gonna do a flip of now. All in the name of you. Right, I need to get rid of this clay. This looks like a potato. That's actually pretty good. So what's it gonna be? I'm um, not sure. It's going to be a sphere. <laughs> it might be a garden sphere to go with my other <laughs> garden spheres and it might be a pumpkin. Okay. So, if I go like that, the sloppy sound. Well, if it's going to go on as a sphere, it's not going to need anything past this, is it? No. So I can get those bits off first of all. Talking out loud to try and help me think what the hell I'm doing here. Um, I like the idea of putting it onto plastic to lift it. Yeah. That's a really good idea. So I think I need to reverse it onto this bat. Yeah. And then, then do a reverse again. Yeah. It. Do you want me to help? Pipperoni! Here we go. Yep. Woo! I was going to do a how to make the pinch pot sphere tutorial. Now I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> just watch this. I don't tell you how to do it, but you're going to just have to watch really carefully. <laughs> Only here for one night. It's good. We're glad you came up tonight before we go. I might just have a single layer. Single layer or double layer? Single, single layer. layer. Might be a bit hard with a big piece of plastic. This will be a miracle if this works. Oh, it feels like it's secured quite well. If it won't go in the thing, you could just make a nice lattice wall hanging. <laughs> I could, couldn't I? I would very much appreciate your help in. Yeah. Um, Depositing said lattice in said mould. If if I break it, I'm really really sorry. Let's go. Let's go. What do you think? Oh, that works, doesn't it? Fish. Is the lattice too big for the bowl? I don't squeeze any more because I don't want to break them. Um, hang on. <laughs> Plan two. <laughs> right, so we'll go now for the bigger bowl that has got less of a curvature. But I Good like... job you've been through the cupboards and seen what was there before. <laughs> I remember there being a lovely big bowl. And I thought at the time, well, that's got a lovely shape to it. 
Well, it was meant to be. It was, wasn't it? So what do you suggest for a top edge? How we, I think they need to be joined together mm. with something. Yeah. Like a rim, like a long strip, if I had enough clay in a long strip to do said suggestion. I think they need to be trimmed off anyway. So they're level. As long as I can get it home, I can refine it mm. at home a bit more, can't I? Yeah. It won't look so random when it's all roughly the same height. So the other projects that we wanted to try and do, if we have time, were what? <laughs> My suggestion. The Sculpey stamp. Polymer clay, yes. To try and use polymer clay to make some clay stamps after watching a few YouTube videos. I've got a couple of ceramic gloss tiles for us to work on, which um, some people have said that they're very good for keeping the texture so it doesn't move and you also bake it on the tile. You've never, have you used polymer clay before? No. Ever? I, I don't, am. I don't know. Your mercy, well, Jeanette. Well, you no, are I've, no I've, I've never used polymer clay either. Yeah, I've but just... you watched the videos and you sent well, me the video and I forgot to watch. <laughs> When we get to that point, I'll tell you what they did, but I don't know how to do it either. So, look at that. Doesn't that look cool? It looks lovely. Apart from, I really don't believe that's going to make it home. Mm. So, how do I work out that circumference to know how long I need? Two of those lengths with possibly a handle. Now I'd rather not do a handle. I, I think the handle's probably too much. Gonna be too much. Mm -hmm. I think it would be nice as a little kind of fruit body. Yeah. But large pieces of fruit like lemons. Yes. That aren't gonna fall through the holes. Yeah. We're, we're on the basis that we think this is going to survive the journey. Yes, it is going to survive the journey. It is it? I might have to do it it's in It's nearly segments. a sphere, look. That's really good. And all from the pattern, that's what does it. Yeah. I didn't realise that, actually. That's how you do it. If you haven't got a mould, and you've got, you know, a couple of balls of clay... So you just pinch pop. Can you talk me through? Because I wasn't watching you, because I was obviously focusing on texture strips what yeah, actually so did you just do? The two equal sized balls of clay kind of squish them into a very very rough pinch pot yeah sandwich them together with some water slippy kind of i've got some chunks of clay there and then uh i gave the join a really good score with the knife smoothed it out and then I've been patterned for about four years. <laughs> yes. So is it the pattern that really brings the shape together? Yes. Because you've just formed spheres from sight, from eye. Yeah. Do you, some people I've seen have got like um, a glass or something and they keep rubbing it around. Yes, you can. Is that something that um, works or? It does. You've kind of got to have the right size. I use a little plastic trifle pot that you know you can. Do you use like glass this. or plastic? I use just a plastic trifle pot. I guess it's just the fact that it's round. Yeah. But it's got to kind of be about the right size for it. So I would think about that because you want it to go round. And if it's too big, it's not going to work. If it's too small, it's not going to work. Yeah. I have done that. So you, you keep putting on your YouTube that you're making spheres for your garden. Yes. But you haven't yet revealed what you're making in your garden or what's in the I garden. Have. When do we get to see what I'll, you're making? I'll do a short. Okay. I have a long piece of driftwood that I got from the beach and it kind of goes on an angle by my fence and then I have the spheres all hanging. Oh, so um, they're hanging. And I think sometimes when you when you did your tutorial recently of making the bowl moulds, yeah. could I see it in the back? So yes. if you're looking at the house on the left hand yes, side. You could. Not that I was looking. 
But I, I was do, looking. I do that with people. Because I'm like, videos. she keeps talking about this garden. Um, oh, I'm doing it. I'm doing this. Yes, you could see it in the background. I have to keep making them because people keep breaking them. So, do you leave them out in the winter as well? Are they yes. frost yes. resistant or have you had a few? Well, the only ones that broke were because Jacob Starr kicked the ball at them for the dog. Oh, that's, that's not the same as frost resistant. That's like no. ball. Seems to be ball so, proof. Yeah, they have been out in the winter. Seem okay. But we haven't had any harsh winters, really. No. And I live at the coast, so it's even less chance of snow because it's salty. It's affecting my kills, the skin of my kiln. The salty air. I saw you a while ago, you did some photos of your pots on the beach. Yeah. And I wanted to say I absolutely love those photos. They create such a lovely backdrop to your pieces. I have It's almost being... like um it's like a calm, chilled, I don't know, it's a lovely, yeah. lovely backdrop and it really focuses on the piece. And I kept mentioning meaning to mention to you how much I love when you do the um, photo shoots outside. Just have you finished pieces? It's just that I haven't had the energy to cart all my stuff down no, to I the suppose, beach. Yeah. Is, it, is it quite a walk to get to no, the beach No, it's, it's not far, it's literally not even 50 metres. Wow, close as that? Yeah. Jacob, you need to help your mum. <laughs> <laughs> Cart some stuff down to the beach. I have meant to all summer um, do my next one at the beach. It's just such a beautiful backdrop that you It got. is. Really lovely. It's a shame not to be um, using it. I need to. Right. This should be long enough. I've decided to join it before I put it on, so mm -hmm. I've only got one join to do. Yes. Which I thought might be easier. So, do I stay as a sphere or do I make a pumpkin? Personally, I'd love a pumpkin. But it's your, it's your sphere. What are you feeling? I just really, really love sitting tapping clay. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, now you've said a pumpkin, you're not giving us the choice to see what a pumpkin would look like. So you've made a sphere, now you can make a second item, you can make a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> it just took me like all year to tap this. <laughs> okay. I'll make it into a pumpkin. Okay, right, so I've got my sphere and I'm going to make my indents for the pumpkin and I'm just going to go on the corner of my stick. This one has holes in because I made a template board for making templates, which I might do a, another video on. So I'm going to go like this and just run it down halfway ish that wasn't very good julia <laughs> it's because we're watching you and go around the other side didn't meet up at all but it's the bottom of the pumpkin so nobody will notice and every pumpkin is unique and different yeah and then i'm going to go do it in quarters like that Because this is, I did a, the same jug that Jeanette's doing, I did in my last kiln opening and it had all kind of swirly patterns in and I did that with the same, with the corner of this and then I'm going to do it in eighths. I think pumpkins don't have eight pieces but mine do. <laughs> I wouldn't even know how many a pumpkin had, I've got to be honest. I've never, never counted. counted. Never counted. I don't even think I did a pumpkin last year. Um, real one, that is. I did do some ceramic ones. 
I carved a pumpkin out with my granddaughter. That's about as close as I've got to playing with a pumpkin. I like doing a bit of pumpkin. It's oh, very man. big in the US, I believe, isn't it? Yes, I think that's where we got it from. It's, because it's not really that popular in the UK. I mean, well, it's starting to get a little bit more. I think we're picking up on what they do in the US. Yeah, with such copycats, aren't they? Absolutely. Um, did you used to do turnips when you were little? No. Oh, you went as poor as me then. <laughs> with the, but there was no pumpkins when, when I was little. I come from Scarborough, so it's, you know, it's a bit of a backwater. Um, but there was nothing, I don't think I'd ever seen a pumpkin. Really? Yeah. So we we had turnips and... Instead of pumpkins? Instead of pumpkins. Oh. And if you've ever tried to carve a turnip out... Much harder than a, a pumpkin, is it? It's a, a challenge. Uh -huh. So you can't just get a spoon in and start scraping all the it's seeds solid. out. solid. Yeah. It's a... Um, it's a rite of passage when you're a child trying to carve a pumpkin from a turnip. So I'm using this plastic ruler and going over my little indents to get them a little bit deeper for my pumpkin. Okay, what's the betting odds on this surviving going home? Three hour car journey. I'm not Country sure. Roads. I'm not sure I want to put money on that. Hi guys, we're back. We had a bit of a IT malfunction. <laughs> My phone was apparently charging while we were recording. I just forgot to put the power on. So we just had a, a recharge. We've fast forwarded a little bit. And I love these little squirrels. You might need to go closer to the camera with that. I don't know. I love that. That is so cute. So it's just two pinch pots, a little bit of coil and some thinner coil. Oh, that's really nice. And I can't remember, we don't know when the battery went, but this is where I've got to with this bowl. We reckon 30% chance it's going to make it home, so not refined it too much. But I've just realised that it won't stand flat because it's got a rounded bottom. So my plan is, I think I'm going to let it slump on a board a little bit. Keep its shape so that the bottom becomes flat. And then at least that would, because it can't slump anymore because the top's being held. Yeah. But if it does slump. You could always yeah. try and fast dry it with your. I need to get the air gun. gun. Yeah, the hair heat gun, which is going to melt the plastic. The edge here has just been smoothed in as best as possible, but it's quite fragile, so you don't want to go and waste a load of time on refining the rim when there's a high chance it's not going to survive at home anyway. So, yay! Well done! Right, where have we got a plug? Down here. Oh, yes! Right, so we go. Thank you very much. So I'm going to move you out of the way. Okay, so what you're looking for in the moulds is... Um, it should be starting to come away from the edges, but you can just gently ease it away from the edges easy to well, encourage it. Because this was pretty stuck for being very dry. Oh, mine looks very loose. That's going to come straight out. Oh, uh, see. Wow. These are heavy and they haven't got like... Hang on, I'll try and turn it over. Oh, look at that! Oh. If you lay it down, that way, yeah, you'll be able to... Just oh, way you cut the to lines! No, that should, should be the same as the other one. <laughs> should. Be in the operative way. Mine doesn't want to come out, so I'm going to try and... Just is this, oh God, I've it tilted this up, it's like falling out on its own. Is this possibly to do with the thickness of the clay, because mine was a little bit thinner? Possibly. Just yeah. only a mil, so I'm concerned that mine's going to be too thin for the um, project. Oh, it'll be fine. 
Okay. Honestly, could I get a hernia carrying these <laughs> things around? So there's still some flexibility in its um, shape. Yeah. But then that's helping when you've got to join them together. Yeah. I'm intrigued what the course is going to be like tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, her, I love her work. I love the style that she does. It's quite quirky. It's a little bit different. Um, but I'm sure that uh, the skill of how she does it yeah. is easy transferred to, you know, whatever your own aesthetic is. And there could be little bits of it we already know how to do, but um, join them all together and you always pick up something at a course, don't you? Absolutely. I've not been, have I been to any pottery courses? I've seen two or three online, but not physically in person. So I think that's going to make a difference. And I believe she's going to show us what she does. Yeah. And then we have time to play and try ourselves. Possibly on a slab of clay. I don't know. Be fun. Interesting. Does she, do you know if she does it on plastic clay? Does she do it before it's best? Sorry. I was going to say, what, do you, what do you mean by plastic on greenware? Yes. I, I think so, yes. I think it's greenware. Looking at her, looking at her social media posts, it looks like it's on greenware. Right. So I don't green. know if it's slip or if it's glaze or under glaze. Yeah, I'm not. From I'm looking at her stuff, I'm not sure. Oh. It's going to be interesting. So, and I, think, I think the finish is always the, the thing that you kind of worry most about for me. You know, like, what glaze am I going to use? I can yeah. sit for hours pondering about one thing because I have no idea what colour to do it. But I'm not yet fully understanding the difference between... Is it engobe? En oh, engobes. Which I don't know if that's just a different word that it's called in the US to what it's called in the UK, but then you've got underglazes, and then obviously the slip is clay, coloured clay. And then whether it's a glaze or whether it goes greenware or whether it goes on to bisqueware or whether it can do both. And it's sometimes I get a bit confused. Like what is, um, I don't know if they're speedball, what are they called when they're slightly translucent? The celadons. Yes. So a celadon, that is, does it break on texture and it's more see-through rather than a solid Yeah, colour? it breaks on texture but not as visibly as some of the Mako ones, for example. Um, so I've only used Amoco, Amoco and Mako, predominantly Mako, and start to get into Amoco after seeing some of yours. And another friend in Scotland, Chris, um, Sir, um, Chris in Scotland, Chris Pella. Right, my, my brain's tired as well. It's been two days now with pottery. Um... So you see another combo that somebody's done or some glazes and you're inspired by that. Have you used Spectrum much? No, just kimchi and sangria. They're the only Spectrum ones that I've used. And how would you compare them to Amoco and Mako? Any difference at all? Or are they just like just different colors? I would say that they're more like Mako than Amoco mm -hmm. um, because you only need two coats really with the Spectrum. Amoco, you kind of really need to layer off. Yeah. Mako, I find you can get away with two on some colors. Um, and and you need the, yeah, and the spectrum ones seem to be the more you put on, the more it's going to run. So you, oh. you don't want to be too generous. Yeah. Do I trim this here, Ooh. or do it with the wider bit? I quite like the do wider bit. I, I like the wider the top bit, on bit the because I can sure form it. I like that. That gives it quite a I think nice it gives aesthetic it a bit of a side. Chess piece kind of feel. I like that. That's going to be a massive jug if I did a jug. How is that going to pour if it's a jug? I'd have to create a spout with the... Reshape it. But it would be a lovely vase. It would. And as a vase with that angle, that would be good. Like how far would you fill it with water? You could yeah. actually have some cutouts in the higher section as well. Yeah. That's one hell of a big jug. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with vase. I think as a vase, it lends itself nicely to flowers yeah, because, because they always go that yeah. way, don't they? So I think that actually, 
that I works like that. better for me. So for this, would you join the two halves together before you do the base naturally? Yep. Yes, I would. So you are slip scoring and... Yeah, I'm going to go down the edges with a bit of water just for try and get a bit of extra leverage. I'm going to try first before I'm I put sure the slip on. It's a thin clay edge. In theory, you could put a coil down the inside and make it more secure and all of that kind of thing. Oh, it fits! Why am I so surprised? <laughs> oh, it fits! And it should do because it came from I two know, pieces of a mould. But, but I didn't think it was going to fit. Mind I'm only a hobby. Potter, so you know, I'm not making tons of things, yeah, and I don't make that many repeats. No, I like to just experiment and just try two or three, but then I think I like making my little houses mm -hmm. because they're all individually completely different, yeah. But then I glaze them as like a village, so they're all roughly like you have you know, a Yorkshire stone, or you have you know, in certain areas of the country, you have a certain type of stone that's used, so. So that's you're making a theme, aren't you? That's yes. So that my theme is yeah. colouring. I can't believe that this fits. Ish. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to take some jiggery, jiggery pokery now, which is the technical term, is it? Yeah. But it's soft enough that you can still move it a little bit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you secure it with coils inside? I don't. Because I ain't going to get my hand in here. You can, if you can work out how to get your hand in. That's, that's my problem, is I don't think I can. So you want it to be a good join, yeah. ideally. I can't get in there to smooth that. Now, if I was home, I've got a sponge on a stick I'd use. Anything. I don't think I've got a long stick though. Jimmy, the bottom's open. I could go from the bottom as well, couldn't I? Yes. As you do, you know. You, you... <sighs> We're not thinking straight. It's been no, a long day. It has, and um, I travelled down yesterday, stayed overnight at my family's my cousin's house which was lovely but you don't sleep the same when you're not in the and I was excited about today so and also glazing at their house so I didn't have a load of sleep I've got some energy drinks to keep me going on the way now <laughs> but I also um on the way here because it was at the end of the day I've been looking after our one-year-old and four-year-old granddaughter mm -hmm. with my husband for the day and um, it was quite exhausting. Yeah. And um, so I rang my mum on the journey here. So it took me just under three hours to get here last night. And she spoke to me for two of those hours and we oh, caught up on the so day nice. and what we're doing and activities. And because um, she's so interested in everything I'm doing. So she said to say hello. Oh. <laughs> and um, But she kept me occupied for a couple of hours, um, which was brilliant. It's lovely when that happens, isn't it? Where you can kind oh, of do two yeah. things at once. And for me and Mum to have two hours of uninterrupted yeah. time to just chat and put the world to rights. So, well, I bet that doesn't happen in your normal life. No, it doesn't, does it? There's always something going on. But then Mum's tea was ready, so she had to go because it was late and she still hadn't eaten. And she said, I want to carry on talking to you. No, Mum, please go and eat. Have you ever been told what makes a successful pouring spout? No. I do remember watching something, and I'm trying to remember what they said. <laughs> something it's so about, good, I don't remember. Something about like, the really teapot like an angle. It has to be sharp, like you shouldn't round. Yeah. Something's got to cut the water, so as the water's coming out, it needs to sharp at that point. So I've just rounded it, and I'm thinking now I need to straighten that. Out. 
Because that's the only edge that it would need, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then the bottom can be rounded, apparently, but not the one that's got to cut the water flow off. But I'm talking about repeating somebody else's instructions because I've never actually tried it myself. Have you made a teapot? You have, haven't you? Yes, I have a little teapot collection on the top of my kitchen No, I haven't got that far yet. That's, that's what I'd love to try. But they were quite early on, my teapots. They were, so I think they? I would do them differently. Different a bit. In what way? I just think I'd make them more fancy. I'd like to do like a themed teapot, you know, something yeah. with characters on or something like that. Like um, Alice in Wonderland or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, at my cousin's house last night and this yeah. morning, she made me a pot of peppermint tea. And it was like, you know, tea for one size. But it was gorgeous. She got it on Etsy and they'd splatter painted it. So I think it was a slip cast teapot. Yeah. But they'd splatter painted it with multi multiple colours, like about six different bright colours, splattered oh, wow. it all over. It looked fabulous. So I said, I'm going to have a go at making that. And he said, what, the teapot? I said, no, the, the, spl uh, the splatter effect. I'm not quite ready for teapots yet. That just sounds confusing with the, what do you call it, that the pot goes in the, what's the recess called? The gallery. That's it, the gallery. <laughs> Um, like getting that to all match size wise? Yeah, mine, I don't think mine, maybe one has a gallery, others have like a, a lid that sits on top. I but love the elegance of this, this shape. It's just so gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful shape. But once we get surface decoration on them, if we can reproduce what we're learning tomorrow, yes. that will take it to a different level. Definitely. Any kind of scrappiness about it is going to disappear under the whatever it is that we would we use under glaze or whatever it is. But I think on gob is just slip. Yes, I think so. Because I was watching, I don't know if it was a Mako video, but I was watching a video, I think it was the Mako one, when they brought out the new on gobs and they were saying you can turn white clay to black clay and and you use it on... Because this different terminology has been used in the US to it is over here, I notice. Yeah. So to make the base, yeah. you would normally sit it on it, cut round yeah. it, and then slip and score it? Yeah, so I would, I would slip it on it. Um, give a rough outline of it, then mm -hmm. I would take it off, slip and score both sides and cut roughly around it and then once I've got it on then I would trim it further, if that makes sense. What are you thinking with the handle, with the rim at the moment? I think it's wonky. I do wonky for your I satisfaction. I don't particularly like it. What? However, I like the shape, but I just, it's just not sitting quite straight. And have you tried running it round on a turntable to get it straight? Have you tried trimming it? Trimming it with a needle tool on the top. At this you don't point, it's too wobbly. At this point, I, I'm not really caring. <laughs> it could stay the way it is. You see, I can't. From here, I can't see a problem. I think you need like a rim shaper to get it where you'd want it to be, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. If I had plant pot, that would help. I'm going to go in the garden search. So welcome back. Um, we've been playing without the camera recording for a little while because we were having a few, well, I was having technical difficulties with my handle. Um, so I'm actually now deciding, I love the shape of this jug, but the handle, I'm too tired now to put the handle on tonight. So I'm going to wrap this up, take it home and try and do it tomorrow when I get home, which I'm hoping this might be firmer to yeah. press against because I feel it's a little bit vulnerable at the moment and then my bowl it's actually now holding its shape really nicely Brilliant. 
Um, I'm glad I put it on a flat surface because mm -hmm. I'm quite a nice fruit bowl for apples, oranges, that type of thing. Whether it survives going home or not, I don't know. But I'm going to leave that out overnight and then pack that tomorrow and I'm going to wrap this in plastic. Mm -hmm. And what did you decide to do with your rim? You obviously kept it on. I kept it on. It's supposed to be cut off around here, but I quite liked the idea of the, the shape of it for a vase because originally I had thought of doing a jug. Um, but I like that on the top. As it is, it's a little vulnerable, so it might not survive and it might get taken off, but we'll see. If it survives... It would still be nice without that flared out part, yeah. but I think for a vase it would very much suit it to have that flute on the top, I think it would it? suit with some really nice, quite tall flowers. Yeah, like there. lilies or really yeah. gladioli, that type of thing. It's, um, it's not perfect, it's not straight, but... I'm okay with it. <laughs> and I'm, look at your little pumpkin. And my little pumpkin. And he might lose his little uh, I oil, love the toils on him. You never know, they might survive. They might do. But we realised we haven't eaten for about, well, six hours, something like that. Yeah, and I only had soup and you only had soup. I only piece had a cake. piece of cake, didn't have any lunch yet. So we realised we're tired. So we're not functioning as well as we would normally do. So we're deciding, packing away the clay. We're going to make some tea and we might do a little bit of playing with polymer clay and stamping later or we might not. So we're going to say goodbye now. Um, obviously you'll see a little bit more if we do a bit more, but we're tired now and we've got so much other catching up and stuff to I do know. as well. We just need to chill and chat. Yeah. We don't have to film everything. And we, we're going to the workshop tomorrow. So Yes. So we need to be fresh for that. Yeah. And we've got to pack all this stuff up and make everything immaculate before we leave in the morning. At yes. 10 30. It, it looks like people who play with clay have been in here. <laughs> yes, which it won't do by the time we leave in the morning, 100%. Only the floor, everything else is alright. Yeah, it's fine. Just needs a bit of a couple of mops over it and we'll yeah. be sorted. So, thank you for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed and we'll catch up with you soon. See you guys. Bye. Bye. So hopefully you made it to the end, part one and part two, and I hope you enjoyed it. We had such an amazing time. It really was amazing. So we then travelled home and you'll get to find out most likely on Instagram on some video shorts if those pieces made it home in one piece. A few snippets on about our workshop that we did with Emily Rowley, which was amazing. And then we're going to try and take photos and videos of our pieces that we took home after they were glazed and fired. So we'll be posting those a little bit later. So if you haven't already, I definitely click the subscribe button. It's free, it really helps the channel a lot. And pop over to Julia and have a look at some of the stuff she does as well. She'd really appreciate it. So I hope you enjoy. Take care. Bye bye.